everybody. 99.9% of you guys do this next question poorly. You don't necessarily do it wrong, but you go about it in a really weird way. So, without writing anything down, look at this question and tell me what would your first step be. Don't say it out loud, just take a moment, have a look at it, because you know whenever I do this, it's because most of you say the wrong first step, isn't it? Josh. Of course you would. That is the right first step. But 99% of the time, when you guys see this, the first thing you do is start putting those numbers in for X's. And that is a bad idea. Why? Because then you'll be dumb, dumb, and you'll like what is the exponent there? That's a bit of a pain to work out, isn't it? If this part of the question was not there, and I just gave you that, what would you do, Josh? Say it, what you said. You'd fix up the X and you'd fix up the Y's, right? And we call that in math, we have a direction for that, don't we? What, if I had written instructions here, what would those instructions say? Starts with an S, ends with a Y, says simplify. What does the word simplify mean? Make it simple. This is not simple. But if I deal with the X's first, as my good friend Josh suggests, what would I do with that 3 over 2 and that 1 over 2? Now, yesterday we had a lot of problems with fractions. I have recording of this entire class telling me 1 half times 1 half is 1. So let's just stop for a moment before we start blurting out answers that make us sound like we can't do grade four math. And let's ask ourselves sensibly, what is three halves plus one half? Four halves, which is two. Pardon? It's not 2 squared, it's x squared. Because 3 halves plus 1 half is 4 halves. <laughs> Riley, if I add x to the third times x to the fourth, what would you do with the exponents? Add them, excellent. Well, now I have x to the 3 halves and x to the 1 half. So what would I do? Add them. So now I have 3 halves plus 1 half, right? Yes, sir. There's a half. There's a half. There's a half. And I'm adding one more half, right? So that's 1, 2, x squared. Well, no, not really. He did that thing that kids do when they want to stop talking. He said, okay. I know that because I still do it to my bosses and my mom and my wife and my children. I'm just not sure as to how else I can explain it. But you, he doesn't seem to understand. And I'm, not trying to, I'm, I'm not trying to be a dick, Riley. I want to know how I can explain it to you. Like, you understand? Yes, Brianna. Pardon me? Please do. Yeah, it's just adding fractions. Yeah. Yeah. And then once you have 4 over 2, you simplify that to x squared. Because 4 divided by 2 is 2. Okay. 
Then what do you do with 2 and negative 1? That equals 1, which we don't write. Now, that is actually simple, isn't it? Because what do I put in there for x? Okay, and what do I put in there for y? 3. So what's the answer? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm agreeing with you. I'm saying mm-hmm. But notice there's 29 other people all saying different things. Now, Sam has stepped in and said, but Mr. Myers, there's no bracket there. Because Sam is arguing this point. Sam is arguing this. What's the first one? Negative four. What's the second one? Four. Positive four. Which one of those, A or B, is this? <laughs> okay, let's look at it this way. What is this part of the question asking me to do? Take x and square it, right? Which means I need to take whatever x is and multiply it by x, yes? So what is x? Negative 2. And what is negative 2? Positive. So this is indeed 4 times 3, which is indeed positive 12. I know it was positive 12. But then Sam stepped in and very vocally and... And because Sam is usually right in math, isn't he? Yeah. But then he lawyer balled himself out of the right answer, which Riley had all the way along. But it, was a good guess, it was a good guess. That's why I wrote the question that way. And that, Jashin, is what happens if you don't simplify first. So let's look at this barftastic one. Should I start throwing negatives in there now? What should I do first? Simplify. I got so many X's there. I'm going to get rid of some. Where should I start? You want to bring that three in? Is that okay to do? Even with this situation? So, what's going on in 12? There's many brackets. Yep. Okay. And there's an X and there's a negative X. Yeah? Okay. So, then let me ask you this. What is the base there? Look closely. Look at what's colored. Just tell me what the base is. Is it? <sighs> okay, I'm going to ask you guys this because this is where you actually show understanding. Two squared. What's the base? Two. Excellent. Negative 2 squared. What's the base? Two. 2. Negative 2 squared. What's the base? Negative, Negative two. 2. Excellent. Now, look carefully at what I have highlighted. What is the base in yellow? Just x. Now, just Nick, what I have highlighted in yellow is only x. Okay, now, what if I extend that yellow out to that 4? Now what is the base? Still not right. 
Negative x cubed is the base. Does everybody see? So right now, what is highlighted in yellow is negative x how many times? It's negative x cubed how many times? Four times. Right? Now, this is where it gets tricky. What's this guy really? It's really x, 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 yes? Right? I know, let's not make the joke, let's, because we're a long way from getting, understanding this, obviously. It's x, x, x with a negative in front of it, isn't it? Because that negative isn't part of that base, is it? Then what's this one? It's another negative, and then x, 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 isn't it? And what's this one? Another negative, then x, x, x. And then another negative and x, 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 yes? Which is now how many x's? With what in front of it? A negative number. Everybody cool? Is it a negative? What happens when you do negative times negative? Times negative? Negative times negative? So what is it really? Everybody with me? Now remember when I said if you just memorize steps, you're going to be in trouble, aren't you? Because most of you here are probably going to say negative x to the 12th. Because most of you would have multiplied over that and left that negative there. Right? So, if this yellow part is x to the 12th, what's this blue part here? x to the what? Fourth, right? So I have x to the fourth and x to the 12th. What's all that? x to the 16th. Is everybody cool there? Then all of that, thank you, Riley. I can tell because your muffled voice is saying it's cubed. What do I do there? What do I do there? X to the 16, 16, 16, which is X to the 48th, yes? Yeah. Now, is that simpler than that? It took a while to get to it, but that's a lot tidier than this, isn't it? Because what do I put in for X? Negative 2. Negative two to the 48th. Now, can I evaluate that in my head? No. no. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. And we could do that 48 times. I will give you guys no calculators. No calculators. I will give you 5 seconds to guess at the value of that number. Think about it. When I say go, I'm going to count 5 seconds. You tell me how big number you think that number is. Go. We have a four billion. Anybody go higher or lower? Did he say four billion? He said four billion. No calculators. Seven trillion. Seven trillion. Do I have any higher or lower than seven trillion? Sixteen billion. Pardon? Three hundred trillion. You are getting warm. Four hundred thousand. It is this. Two, because I don't need to put it as negative, right? To the, oh crap, I just doubled it up. Two to the 48th power. 281 trillion. 474 billion. 976 million. 700,000. Because it's an even 
exponent. And the negative is part of it. Thank you. Isn't it though? Only from a two. So this is that thing where the teacher says, would you rather I pay you, I start paying you a penny a day and I double it every day? And you say, no, I don't want a penny a day. Because in like 10 days, you're making tons of money because it doubles every day. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 5, 12, 10, 24, and so on. 20, 48, 40, 96, and so on, and so on, and so on. It starts out like this. Little, 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 Plus, put it on three different quizzes and two different tests. No. Because you need to learn algebra to go further in math. How many of you have more math to take after this year? Every one of you put your hand up because you all got to take a grade 11 math. No, you only got to take, you only got to take a grade 11. So you'd better know some algebra. Now, volume of a sphere, 4 pi r cubed over 3. Thank you, Jashin. What's your job now? No. Multiply 425 by 3. So I have now 1275 equals 4 pi r cubed. Now here is where every single one of you Screws up. When my computer thaws and writes out everything I've written, what math is happening here? Four times pi times r. Yes? So if I want to get rid of this, I have to do, if there was no pi there, I would do what to get rid of the four? I would divide by four. Now, a great many of you cannot do this on your calculators. So I show it to you step by step, and then you don't bother learning it, and then you wonder why you can't do math. If you can't figure this out in your calculator, do it step by step. So I'm going to divide this side by four. So now, what is over here? Pi r cubed. And what is over here? 318.75. Now, how would I get rid of the pi? Divide by pi. So now I have r cubed equals what? Yes. He's doing the math. 318.75 divided by pi and getting this barfy number pardon me i am i have no 101.46 yes now if this was a pythagoras question and it was r squared what would we do square root but it's not r squared it's r cubed so what do we do 
cube root. So we take this with our calculator and we find the cubed root of it. Now, let's pretend I still haven't learned how to do that. Thank you. Because this shows me you understand the algebra. And this is a math class, not calculator 10. Okay? Maybe you forgot your calculator and had to borrow somebody else's that day and you can't find the cube root button. Right? Maybe you forgot your calculator completely and showed me all this work. And when you got to here, you were just like, man, I don't have a calculator. I know it's around 3.14. That's basically 318, 314 divided by 3.14, which is about 100. If you even showed me this and said this, R cubed, was approximately 100, would I still be happy? Yes. Yes. Because the problem you guys have isn't with this. It's with doing the algebra, and that's what I need you to be good at. I don't care if you can find this answer. I care if you can do the algebra to get to it. Do you all understand? That is what's important. So now I want you to try this one. A cone with equal height and radius has a volume of that. So the volume of a cone is the same as all volumes of prism of pyramids. It's area of the base times the height divided by three. The area of the base, if it's a cone, it's a circle, yes? So what's the area of a circle? Pi r squared times the height divided by three, yes? Now, what do I know about H and R? No. They are equal. So H equals R, doesn't it? So what can I write here instead of H? R. So I can write pi R what? Cubed over 3. Correct? Because R equals H. So that's R squared times R, which gives me R cubed. Now, what's the volume? It's 18. Solve this for me. Every single one of you do the algebra now and get to the spot where you have to have a calculator. Anybody want to go first? Jack, hit me. Okay, so you multiply by three. Multiply by three. Cancel, cancel. So this equals 54. Then what? Then you would divide by pi. So I have 54 equals pi r cubed. Eventually. Then what would you do? So, 54 equals pi r cubed, yes? Now what? Divide by, pi. Divide by pi. Now let's pretend I don't know how to do that on my calculator. So what would you write on your piece of paper to show your math teacher you can do math? 54 over pi would equal r cubed, yes? Because I divide both sides by pi. The pies cancel. Is everybody cool to there? Yes. Okay. Now, Jack? So now, to, if you have a calculator, you write the cube root of 54 over pi, and then you divide by pi, and then you R. Yes. Could you stop there? Yes. Would I be happy? Yes. Would I be turning cartwheels? No. Yes. Would I be jumping for joy? Yes. Yes. Would I go home and for a, one of the rare days say, I actually taught somebody something. Yes. yes. Does everybody understand? I don't care if you cannot get me a number there. 
That's your guys' hang-up. That's not mine. How many times have I said that's a perfectly acceptable answer in this classroom? At least. And yet, you guys flip out. Okay? All right, now listen to me. It's 146. This class goes until 2, blah, 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 blah. I am done this unit. But you will notice I have given you 1, 2 more textbook pages. Why? I have given you the answers. Why? To check over and make sure you know what you are doing. After that, the next thing in your book is what? A review. Are the reviews for marks? Yes. Whose marks? Your marks. This would be our third review. This is how the first two reviews have gone. Yes, kid? Oh, no, I do it. Well, could you try this? I oh, don't know. Could I? What about this? I oh, don't know. Could I? Well, maybe this. I oh, don't know, because I don't know how to do it. Oh, let me do that review for you, and then you can give me the marks for it, right? No. Why? Because when did I pass Math 10? 1990. 37 years ago. 27 years ago. 27 years ago. So, how will you know how to do the review? By reading your notes talking to your neighbor, and doing your practice. Where do I find practice, Mr. Myers? Oh, my good gravy. Two pages of it. When will I expect this review done? Am I a barbarian? Do I not recognize that you people have lives? Do I not recognize that today is a possible day when you might be busy this evening? Yes. yes. If you have little kid siblings, chances are your parents have said, I'm done trick-or-treating, take them. I bet. I bet. I know my, I don't have little kids here. My kids are 13 and 11. I don't trick-or-treat no more. The only thing that keeps them from getting an actual boot in the butt on their way out the door is my wife saying, they can stay for a little bit longer. Okay? So I recognize a great many of you are probably busy tonight. So I'm not going to demand that this homework get done tonight. But I will demand that I see this review ready for marking on Thursday right after, oh, last block for you people, which begins at around 1.30. I When is the earliest I could give you your exponents and radicals test? Would I give a test on a Friday if I could avoid it, Riley? That's hurtful, man. That's hurtful. Oh, I, I see what you mean. All right, so, but be aware, of course, that the class has to move on. We will be starting the next unit Thursday and continuing it, or Wednesday, and continuing it Friday, right? But I got no problem giving you guys a test on a Monday after lunch. It's not the morning, so you can't say, oh, I'm so tired. And it's not last block, so you can't say, eh, I'm just looking forward to going home. When's this class end? Mondays and Wednesdays, if you haven't figured it out, are some of my favorite days to give block C tests. 
because it's right after lunch. Okay? Go! Okay, we'll be starting a new unit. So make sure you watch the video. Mason. A printout of the review? Yes, I can print you the review. Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. Riley, or not Riley, Mason. Would you like the couple of practice pages that go with it? Is your book gone or misplaced? It's misplaced, so I don't need to give you a new whole book? You feel you'll find it? Okay. Hey, uh, somebody that's in their purple book right now, what page number of your purple book is the textbook page 233? 112? Okay. Yep. Well, then he's got to do a ton of extra writing. Yeah. Yeah, we could, you could do that if you want. I, but I don't mind printing five pages either. Because to be perfectly honest, Riley, I have no idea because a bunch of kids changed in and out at the beginning of the year. I have no idea if I have enough green books for the next semester anyway. Or you guys have purple books. Yeah. I don't know if I have enough purple books for the next semester anyway. I may have to print more already. Yeah. So I'd like to just, if you only need a page or two, it's just easier to do this. As long as Mason doesn't mind waiting a moment or two. And if I know Mason, I'm pretty sure he's okay with waiting a moment or two. Right? Yeah. See? It might snow this week, apparently. It was four degrees this morning. I had to scrape frost off my car.
Find one that isn't. <laughs>